Everyone, Rob Nelson here. Today I'm going to be talking about something near and dear to my heart, and that's animations. In particular, how to do the hand-drawn style. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I did a Draw My Life, and it looked like this. I was stupidly planning to sail my sailboat to Australia, and on one fateful day, having not checked the weather, I sailed into the storm of the decade and sank it a few miles offshore. And a lot of you ask me, how did I do that? Well, I'm gonna walk you through that, but I'm also gonna show you how to do hand-drawn text style, or jittery text, something that looks like this. Now, these are actually three individual frames that I'm cycling one after the other, and you can see that there is, each one is slightly different, so I'm gonna show you that, and then watch this. This is simulated hand-drawn technique, or wobbly text, done in After Effects. And you can put them all together, and it's gonna look like this. You can, it kinda of just looks like things are sketched out on a piece of paper. So those are three different techniques, and I'm gonna walk you through from a very basic standpoint, and I'm gonna also walk you through the programs. But what I wanna do now is I'm gonna kinda of take it all back a step. I wanna kinda of give you an introduction to how things were animated to start, and why we are now simulating that hand-drawn technique. Movies often are shot at 24 frames per second. Back in the day when they were doing animated things, they would draw a different frame, but they wouldn't do 24 different ones. Oftentimes it would be 12, sometimes as few as 8, and it still had a really nice effect. So what happened though is if you were, say, drawing the text, um, you would draw all these different ones and you'd try to get it as perfect as possible, but sometimes they wouldn't all be the same and so the text would jitter a little bit. I'm going to walk you through how you can very simply do that in Photoshop. So check this out. If I open up Photoshop, I have a composition already set up here. So I have different layers. Now, I picked this text, and then what I did is on one layer, I actually took my pen tool and I traced over the top of it here on my tablet. And it's really nice to have a tablet. You don't necessarily have to, you can do it with the mouse too. So this is one frame, I drew over the top of it. And then I muted that frame and I drew over it again, trying to get as close as possible to the original. And then I did it a third time. And if you look at the end here, for instance, you can see that, you know, as I highlight the different layers, I didn't get the end perfect every time, but that's okay. Okay, so then what you do is you go up here to each individual layer, you just go, well, we want to mute the text layer that's behind it. We'll just say file, save for web, and you can keep it as a JPEG, save. And then in this particular example, I've already created them so we can speed through it. I created Rob 1, Rob 2, and Rob 3, and those are all three of the individual layers. So I won't do anything now. Let me go into Final Cut. Okay, here's Rob 1, Rob 2, and Rob 3. And if you kind of look, you can see that as I scroll between them, it jitters just a little bit. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grab a few frames of each and cut and paste and line, loop them in our project. Now I find the easiest way to do that is just to click on the first one and then shift click on the last one and that highlights all of them and you can click and drag them into your timeline. Now this gives a couple seconds uh, duration for each one, that's the preset that I have, but if I hit control D that highlights right here and allows me to change the duration. I'm just going to hit six, enter. Uh, I need to now copy and paste them so Apple C, Apple V, 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 and I just keep holding it down and pasting it in. Now what you can see if I play it, you can see that we have jittery text. Okay, so that is hand-drawn text. Now we're gonna look at how to simulate hand-drawn text. Okay, so if we go into After Effects, that's one of the easiest ways to do it. Um, again, I'm gonna just create a new composition so you can see me walk through the whole thing. I'm gonna create it at eight frames per second um, at a normal 1080p. Okay, I'll drop it into the timeline. If this was your drawing, or this was the only thing you had to work with, you could simulate it cycling through a couple of different iterations and kind of juggling a little bit. I find the best way to do that is go up to Effect, um, Distort, and then down here to Turbulent Displace. Now, you can see that it actually distorts it quite a lot. We don't want it to do that much. In fact, let me just bring it down, well, I don't know, to say 10, maybe? Uh, the size is also quite a bit, we, I don't know, bring it down to 50. We can play with these 
once we add an expression. Okay, so here's your turbulent displace. Now one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to the evolution options. We wanna cycle the evolution. And then we're gonna add a very simple expression. Now, if you don't know anything about After Effects and you've never used expressions, just kind of bear with me here. I'm gonna just tell you what to press and I will put a simple expression on it for you. Uh, but it's just simple code that allows you to just generate some randomness. Um, okay, so on the random seed, and I'll just show you down here, evolution options, we're going to add a very simple expression. So to do that you hit shift option equal sign. So that brings up the very simple expression down here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the time and I'm going to multiply it times 10. And so every time it goes through it's just going to create some randomness and what you can see it working right here. Uh, we'll just go with that. Okay, so let's go to composition, add to render queue. Um, I have it set to go out as an H.264 file, and remember uh, to save it where you want it. Now let's go Rob Nelson After Effects 2, because I already composed this once, and we'll render that. All right, now let's bring it into Final Cut. Uh, so here it is, and we'll just drag it right into the timeline, because it's so easy that way. Here's the actual hand-drawn. You can see that it's cycling. And then here's the simulated, and so we'll have these as our two that we can kind of compare back and forth. Now. If you want to make it look like it's drawn on paper, then the next step is you have to add paper to it. <laughs> so let's do that. I actually have a little paper in here somewhere. Let me see, where is it? Ah, here we go. Here's my paper. Okay, so let's just drag it into the timeline. First of all, let's make all of these little individual things a new compound clip. Okay, so we're going to make sure these are side by side. Here's our paper. And then here's Here's the hand-drawn, here's simulated hand-drawn, and then here's our paper down below. Uh, first things first, we got to make the paper a little bit bigger. So let's just drag it all the way out. And then the other thing we have to do is we have to make both of these so that they are composed properly on top and we take the white out. So the way to do that, I just highlight both of them and I go to blend mode and multiply. And you can see it actually hits both of them at the same time. Now you have hand drawn on top of paper. Let me show you how the little sketch works into it. So this is the raw sketch from the Draw My Life. I basically just figured out what I was saying and I uh, drew it in Photoshop and then screen captured the whole thing. So you can see this is just me drawing right here, right? All the different things. Let's go down to this little section which I think worked really nicely. It's basically little tiny stick figures um, with just a little bit of color added to their bodies. All right, let's bring this down into the timeline. Oops, okay, and it just dropped itself on top of my text. And just for fun, I'm gonna put the text on top of it. Um, and we'll bring this all the way to the beginning. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure the blend mode is multiply. And, uh, and then the other thing I'm going to do is make that a compound clip, shrink it down, get it out of the way. Okay, so there's my animation drawing, drawing on top of my paper. <clears throat> it's a little bit long, so I'm going to shrink it down. Uh, let's make it four times faster. Say I think that'll make it a five second clip, something like that. Now it's drawing at a, a fairly decent pace. Now once it's drawn, I kind of want to stop it. Um, before it gets all the way to the end and so what I do is I'm highlighting that clip and I make a screen capture of that individual clip so that's option F in Final Cut and again I've got to go back and make sure that the blend mode is multiply. Okay so that looks pretty cool and I can change that let's just make it go all the way to the end so I can run it. So this is Rob, the story of Rob Nelson and um, everybody is doing their thing. Now remember, one of the things that you could do is you could take this hand-drawn technique and you could bring it into After Effects and do that little simulated thing that we did. But if, you know, that takes a lot of time. It's like bringing it into a new program, compositing, bring it back. It's, it's a little bit of a pain. I like to do it all in Final Cut. So check this out. So we have the animated text, which looks kind of neat. Um, and it looks a little bit different on the end here. This is the simulated part. Um, Again, let's make this. A, let's make all of this a new compound clip. Again, we'll kind of go back to multiply. Now we got the paper underneath. We got the drawing on top. Now watch what happens if I start adding a few individual effects in Final Cut. So we'll go to Stylize. We'll go down to the Sketch Effect. And now the drawings kind of look like it's just being sketched on there. 
which I really like. Now it's a little bit faded, and so to brighten that up, I add a couple more effects. Um, the first thing I do is I combine these two into one compound clip. Then I add a couple of different looks to it. Oh, actually I add a vignette. I think that looks quite nice. It's, so that darkens it up just a tad. Um, and then I quite like adding a, 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 an effect or two. There's a couple different ones I use. I quite like this teal and orange because it makes it look like there's maybe a lamp shining down on the paper and you're sketching it out. So if you play that, this is what it's looking like. So there you go, that's pretty much it. Um, and as you can tell, that was very fast. It didn't take a lot of work. It looks pretty neat in the end, and you don't have to know how to draw. These are just stick figures right here that are being drawn onto the text. I'm not animating the stick figures in any way. You can do a three minute video in one day with this technique. And that's why I use it a lot, because I do have to speed through a lot of different things. So that's partly why I wanted to share it with you, because I know a lot of you are not animators by trade, uh, or After Effects gurus or anything like that, but you like to tell stories, and I think that it's something everybody should have in their toolkit. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have no idea about how to do sketch animations at all, and you're still a little bit confused, I encourage you to check out this video. I walked you through the whole process, start to finish, from kind of storyboarding it to um, drawing it out. Whew, thanks for watching. Next week, we're gonna be going back to camera stuff, so stay tuned, and we'll see you in the next video.